Welcome to ASMTG, and we have a really fun one for you today. Someone else's deck. So a couple weeks ago at the Pro Tour Karlov Manor in Chicago, they had the regular tournament going for everybody else, and this deck took home the championship. It went 12, one and one, absolutely unbelievable. Totally came out of nowhere. Nobody really knew much about this deck. And so if you haven't already heard about it or seen some other people try and play this one, I think it is incredibly cool, but definitely suited for best of three. So we're looking to see, can this thing hop in a best of one with how aggro it is and be able to do something? The number one interesting thing about this deck is 68, right? They didn't just go with the standard 60 card deck. For some reason, they're like, no, no, no. We have to have 68 on this thing. And then look at this mana base, right? We're sitting here with all these sack lands to gain us a little bit of life. But the true key is you're using cards like your aftermath anal analysis and your splendid re reclamation to get all these things back onto the battlefield. So you're gonna get all these triggers to gain a bunch of life. And then obviously we're gonna end up running out of all these basics. There's not like a ton of basics, but you should now have enough land on that battlefield. Also, you're sitting here with all these channel lands that you're gonna be able to constantly be getting back as well when you're going with your over slime. Slogurt is an absolutely fantastic garden that I've made work in many different ways, but a really cool one here, and it helps make this kind of infinite loop where we constantly just start getting back our abandoned mire, and then we get back our Jace, and then we minus it, and then we get it back, and then we're able to deck them out. We also, very easily with this deck, potentially on turn four, if you have your aftermath analysis, you're gonna be able to get a Troxa down the very next turn. So that's a turn five of Troxa to get a whole bunch of value out of it. And to stave off, and I've changed it a little bit, just because we are in best of one, to stave off the best of one meta that is incredibly aggro, a couple copies of cut down, a couple copies of go for the throat, and I did up Terror Tide from two copies to three copies. Just because we're dealing with mono red, we're dealing with Boros Convoke, those can go really quick. So we're gonna have to be able to just hold those things back a little bit so we can get going. If all we're looking at is playing a turn three creature, that's gonna be far too slow for them if they're on the play. So it's really important that maybe we have a little bit of early interaction and then we're able to sweep the board on them. Going against any type of control deck. So Azorius control, Jeskai control has become a lot more popular because of the aggro meta. And I think in best of three, right, you see a little bit more control out there, a little bit more mid range. So I think this should do really well with it. Now, I will tell you, this is gonna be my very first time playing this deck. I haven't got to watch any gameplay of this deck either, so I don't even know all the synergies. I guarantee this is definitely a 20, 30 game deck where you gotta really play this thing to figure it out. I would love to have seen an interview of the guy who actually kind of made this deck or took this deck at least to the tournament and just see how much play testing did he actually do against the meta with it to really figure out all its ins and outs, but it's incredibly cool. I knew I just had to play it the second I saw that this one. I was looking at the top eight and I saw this is like what in the world so unique so crazy and that's what i love about standard people might call it dry they might call it stale i would totally disagree if you looked at my meta analysis we had seven tier one decks we had 22 tier two decks that's 29 decks that are going to rank you up get you up to mythic and then you have these creative fun decks like this that somebody just took out of nowhere brought to a tournament and was able to win 12 one and one with it so it just shows you a little bit of creativity could go a long way and there could be another hidden gem out there and it's just about finding the thing so if you ever have a cool idea i always love to hear it drop it in the comments but let's go ahead and test this thing out and make sure you stay at the very end of this video where i'm gonna let you know my final thoughts and what jitsu belt i think this deck deserves let's go ahead and jump on the ladder and test out the chicago winner all right here we go game one with our chicago winner deck been super curious to see how this plays especially in best of one right we have so much aggro in best of one with boros convoke with mono red aggro we have all sorts of good human style decks let's just go ahead and take a green one uh, let's go ahead and get the black and start getting our mill on. So we have all of our channel lands ready to go. Now we just... Okay, only one land in the bin. I think we... So we attack and we jace ourselves, right? All right, because we want to get more lands in the bin. Then we want to be able to use its ability next turn. 
If they end up getting their kill spell, though... Alright, let's see what happens here. I mean, those are fantastic lands to get into the graveyard, but if they have the kill spell... We still need to find another blue if we wanted a memory deluge. So we're in pretty bad shape with one, yep. Hmm. Now what? I guess we have to get it back. I guess that's our best bet now. You can be made to open. All right, so we go ahead and pass. And then end step, we'll use our Band of Mire. And then we're going to have to wait until we have six mana now with this. So it is interesting. I think Arena has paired us up against a definitely not a top tier deck. Okay. Let's see what they find off of this. A land. All right, so our turn, we'll go and get our creature back. Boy, we're gonna ramp so huge when we finally do this though. Okay, we go here. We gotta just plus again. And we have to pass. We want the six mana, we wanna do the entire thing, but I mean, that's gonna be a bunch of life, four lands plus the life. Five lands, six lands are going to come into play. So we'll definitely have that huge ramp. Now we need to be able to get a white. So that's the only thing we're missing to just hard cast our Atroxa. But this Soren right now is definitely going to get a little scary. 13 damage to us. It's just a question, what else are they going to have to do damage to us? And the fact that I see Bitter Triumph, it makes me assume this is a reanimator deck. We could just victory. use this now as well. Just get back our Slogurt now. I don't hate that. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get back the Slogurt now. Err. Uh, we get a Slogurt anyway. All right, here we go. Oh man, this is so huge. <laughs> all right, I gotta admit, that is pretty fun. That is pretty cool to just get all of that going off. Uh, the thing is, do we just run out of basics in the deck? I think we might. Yeah, I think that was our last basic right there. So we still have some lands in here. Okay, we have one swamp. Okay, so one swamp is all we have. Um, I think the right thing is still to just be plusing this. So now we have the memory deluge. We got Sloger, we got Atroxa. Obviously, I think it's gotta be Atroxa though. One thing we have to be careful on though is if this is a reanimator deck, them killing our Atroxa and they reanimate <clears throat> our Atroxa. Dire times call for dire tactics. Problem is, we're only gonna have one threat. I mean, there's no way they don't have another bitter triumph. Go for the throat in their hand. And all the slogurts here. Alright. Um. We're gonna do this. Hopefully they don't, okay, so they let us at least search. So artifact, I want a counter spell. I think it's more card draw, protection. I 
think that's our best bet right there. And what do we have left? We have two, four, we have two, four, six. So I can play this. And we still have the mana available for both the Soaring City and our Urtai. Maybe it's time we start milling them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can get rid of one of these Slogurts. Wow, three lands, that's not good. All right, we'll ditch you. Wait, have we not played anything yet? That'll give us our last Swamp, I believe we have in the deck. Okay. And now we pass. Although, wait a minute. Do we just bounce their Sworn right now before they can minus it? We are at 26 life. No, I don't, I don't think that's worth it. I think bouncing our own Atroxid back to our hand is probably the smartest bet or countering something. But I think I'm going to bounce no matter what. Right, because if they do a basic kill spell, I'd rather bounce it because then I don't want them to Sunfall us. If they try and Sunfall, once again, I'd rather leave up the counter as well. interesting so there's nothing we could go find off of that and they know that that's a pretty good play but this only costs three mana because we have a legendary creature all right i'm hoping they forget that aspect of it if it would have cost us four, that would have been a super sneaky trick. But now they have taken away at least our counter ability, but we weren't planning on doing that one anyway. So then when they Sunfall, in response, you go for the Throat or Bitter Triumph. Oh, they don't. Okay. It means they don't have it. I have you now. So My way. I think we just killed our Planeswalker. I think that's the better plan right here. They have six. Okay, okay. Not going to be really playing lands anytime soon. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I just don't want them drawing any more cards off of it we'll go with a sloger because we're absolutely fine uh we'll plus this boy so much going on and instead of making it night i think we'll just draw cards off our memory deluge all right so we'll go and pass Kind of forcing them to start doing Sunfall shenanigans again. Still would love to know, I mean, is this just a Abzan control deck? Uh, with super friends, just a bunch of planeswalkers? So not, because I mean, I haven't seen a single creature. So it's not seen like it's reanimation. Yeah. All right, we just have to let that happen. One... Yeah, two, three, I suppose. Where are we at? 26 cards. We'll go another Troxa. There we go. Those are two good ones. Okay. So... What is best? What is best? We'll go right here. Q. 
Keep minusing. I think maybe it looks like our plan is to mill them out. Five, six, seven. So we can go Atroxa. What do we take? Yes. Yes. Sure. Then on our deck here, we're gonna have to discard so much. All right, we pass. What do we even? This card six. One, two, three. Landfall. Second time this ability triggers to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an elf or elemental card. Put the card in your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library. I just don't think that's needed. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, I suppose. All right, so now we can bounce this. Remove three counters, return it to my hand. So now we have a little bit of protection here. We could bounce our Troxa still. Not that we need to. Interesting. Oh, let it be my turn. Gets a counter. You can be made to open. Uh, we could have so if they let's see what happens here. They use that to block, we bounce it. Okay, so a get lost. So we will channel this to bounce it. Wandering Emperor. Like water. We're going to bounce this just so we can get both of them back into our hand. And then we get both back. Another Slogurt. And we have... We have the bounce again. So we just keep doing this. All right, end turn. Discard three. One, two, three. Okay, gets three counters. So now we either use our Soaring City or we move the three counters again. I think we should just be able to keep doing this loop. But the question is, can we avoid all their removal for long enough? Man, I would love to have watched that Chicago one. How this person went, to, I think it was 12, one and one. Hey, that's trouble. So you went 12, one and one, but how do you finish your games in the time limit? Ooh, little ob. Okay, they decide they are done right there. I, I don't think we necessarily just had it won. I know we we're gonna have our loops just go back and forth over and over. It was gonna be hard for them to attack, but you could have sacked this, had a couple obs out there. I mean, it would have forced me to just keep attacking all these planeswalkers. It would have been difficult. It would have taken a while, but I think maybe we would have got there. Question is, oh, actually that's what I needed to start doing. I'm sorry. That's right. Okay. 
huge mistake, was not thinking. So what, what I needed to be doing is using this, I keep getting back my Jace, and I just mill them out for the rest, and then that would've just been game over. All right, yeah, we easily had that. I just didn't play that smart. All right, uh, so hard to know what I'm even supposed to do with this deck. All right, let's go ahead and keep it, I guess. I wanna find a tap land. I think you're supposed to use these first, but I mean, I wanna find an untap land. All right, I'll, I'll keep it. My whole idea is I wanna play Slogurt on curve, I think. And then we play this the following turn with one of these lands. Okay, uh, so we want a forest. Uh, we want an island here. I guess we have that. So let's just take the planes. And normally they don't have a ton of removal in this. They do have the case. So if they're able to go something like Novice Inspector, right into Gleeful Demolition, Okay, so you still get to tap your three things, get your scry. The following turn, you could use the case to kill my Slogurt. We kind of need Terror Tide now. Uh, so let's see, Plains Island Swamp. We'll have to find a swamp. All right, so we got to get something down. We need some sort of threat. Force them to use their scry again so they could get in. If they have the case right now, though, I mean, that is absolutely devastating for us. Night. Not great, but we're not out of it. Okay, not the biggest hits. They could still get their, still get in for three, though, unfortunately. Ooh, that's pretty good though. All right, so we go creature first. We want a swamp. Maybe we find a cut down, at least take care of something. Hey, we don't. All right, now we pass. Hmm. What do we do here? So that's going to take to the air. We have, we can't block with this. Okay, so if they go night and take to the air, is this worthwhile keeping around? Second time this ability is resolved this turn, reveal cards from the top of your life. Oh, case. All right, that, that does it for us. All right, we just have no good blockers. So get to the air. We're going to take eight right now. It might even, yeah. It might just attack everybody just so that you could flip this. Actually, that's what I would do if I was them. Attack everybody. Who cares? You lose one of your small ones. You're still hitting me for nine. All right. Let's go green. We need the blocker. What do we mill over? Oh, we do have the kill spell for him. All right, we're gonna pass. Thank you. 
We get back three lands. I don't think that's enough. Kill both of my creatures. I don't know if chumping is going to do much for us, though. I mean, those are at least going to be two ones. Yeah, I guess we just go that way. Although we do have another one. Uh, that, that's a tough call, actually. Green. Take a blue. So I'm not going to use the ability. I want more blockers. So we're going to go here. I don't know how we're going to make it out of this. I haven't seen the Terror Tide yet, though. Man. If we would have drawn the Atroxa. If, if they have two of those, we're just dead. Okay, they do. Or it's Clue. No, they have two. All right. I mean, we could block three things and we have to take three. Technically not lethal. Unless you have another case to kill something. Or you have a Gloria uh, War Leader's Call. Draws card, looks for the answer. Okay, so we have to block there. We have to block there. And we take six. They could also have the Epicure for that extra ping as well. So really lots of answers, okay. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have to play this. Wow, we're, we're actually still in this thing. All right, so we clean up all of that. So if you have another Resolute Reinforcement, we technically still do lose, right? Because you get this back. I mean, so they could hit us right now for two. I guess the Imidane's recruit, War Leader Call. Oh, that's nasty. I think we play this because it's it just, I mean, it's a mana efficiency. All right. We're at five. This will hit me for four. So at one, once again.
another terror tide. Uh, that's hilarious. Okay. Ooh, a cut down. That's pretty huge. Let's go green. Blue. Okay. We're gonna get them all back. Do we do that now? Whenever land enters the battlefield, blah, 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 I get that. Then if it's the second time this ability is resolved, reveal cards from the top of your library into a real elf or elemental card. Put that card in your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library. Okay, so we're at three. We want to still use this as a blocker. I believe. Okay, so we pass. This will be absolutely insanity if we're able to somehow pull this thing out. So they're just hard casting the night. Okay. So now they have no instant speed things they could do. It's just gonna hit me for one. Might as well just use this as the chump blocker, right? I don't understand what, what that does. Like, why does it have me choose that? Choose let me print that I wish to keep, the one that I actually have ability to use. All right, so now we get all these triggers. We gain some life. It's blue. Blue. Green. Just for some fun. All right, last one. And now... We should be able to... Hopefully find a Troxa off of this. This is absolutely insane right now. I can't believe we might be able to get this. Oh, we don't get it. Um... Return all land cards. That's a yes. I think we want a Troxa. I mean, I don't think Jace is going to really help. So, and a memory deluge. So, we go with a secondary one. Okay, yeah. We have a Troxa in there. So we get a Troxa back. And we'll basically be able to play it for free. Uh, do we even waste killing that? Because it's an extra ping of damage. So we pass. Ooh, get rid of War Leader's Call. We like that. Okay. So first things first. We want that in the graveyard. Boy, really got to think here. All right, let's go white. Decline. Uh, we wish to keep you. We wish to keep you. All right, so we gain some more life. And now we need blue. We need black, white, green. 
<laughs> we have done it. We were about to do the loop on them and just be able to get things back over and over again and actually be able to mill them out. We beat Boris Convoke, the deck that I obviously I think is the best for best of one, the most aggro, and the huge question mark with this deck is can you actually beat the aggro that we see in best of one right now? We did with Boris Convoke. Granted, we got an incredibly lucky top deck, but we were able to figure it out from there. What a game. That was absolutely awesome. Oof. All right, going first, got the Terror Tide. That could be huge. Uh, Swamp Mountain Forest, Forest Plains Island. So I think we... That's the only one that's for swamps. We have to play this first and we have to get a forest. I want to make sure I have double swamp. All right, so we'll try this. Very tricky on what to get, right? Slogurt, you need blue, right? For our memory to lose, you would need blue. Forest Plains Island. All right, so we're going to get the forest because we want to be able to play the Nissa at least. Man, I again, I just don't understand how that Chicago winner played this deck Okay, okay. Then we'll save that then, right? Although we need the other swamp. Yeah, we'll see what we get. So let's go ahead and play it like this. Uh, we'll trash you. So how does Chicago winner got this? When you go 12-1-1, one, one, you're playing best of three. You got sideboards. I, I think it's only 50 minutes you get per round. I would love to check on theirs to see what theirs is. But I just don't know how you do that. All right, so mono red after Boris Convoke. So we're getting the two fastest decks in the format and they're coming out hard. All right, ooh, that is good. I'm gonna go here. Let's try and force them to use their removal spells on it. Then we can do this and we can always Terror Tide after. Okay. Easy block here on the Felden. Right, because if they want to use another Monstrous Rage. We get rid of a Monstrous Rage and a creature. You block Swift Spear, the Monstrous Rage, they're Felden, and now we take damage from both sides. Yep. Right, because then Monastery Swift Spear would have killed ours, plus we take that five. I mean, they get to look at a ton of cards, though. Somehow, if you get a Troxa down on this game, though, if somehow we get to that, we will be able to win. What are they peeking at? Okay. I think we want to gain the life. I think that's more important. We'll go ahead and go find our Swamp. So next turn, we could Terra Tide. We have the go for the Throat. Yeah, I mean, Charming Scoundrel would have just done more damage to us. Foundry's trouble. Oh, they already they already had one. Okay. Because then they're going to come on, oh, pump this up. So that's why the Swiss Spear is a more important thing to kill. We could Terror Tide get rid of that. And we might just have to. A Jace? Jace? Two, four. No, we can't. We need. Okay. We need to play Atroxa. That's got to go in the graveyard. We have to go here. Green, black. Okay, so. It's a untap land off the top, or we're done. Hit us for four, we go to five. Okay, we go to three. Monstrous Rage finishes it. Oh, we don't do it. Um. Wow, 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 wow. 
right? Terror Tide gets rid of that, drops us to two, and then we have a cut down that could only kill one of these two things. There's gotta be Memory Deluge. We're so close. If, if they just make a mistake and don't activate their foundry. Yeah, they got us. Oh, and a squee. All right. Uh, never mind then. I mean, but let's just pretend we were able to get a Troxa down. Darn. All right, going first, we need a swamp for our cut down. All right, so we've gone against the two most aggro decks and we're one and one. Boris Convoke though, you gotta admit, was a little bit lucky, but still, we, we did get the win. So find our swamp. And then we're gonna obviously go surveil land, hope to get off. Okay. Well, Forest Plains Island. Maybe it's just thin out the deck, right? Get our forest right now. Yeah, we'll go and do that. And then surveil land, and then we're gonna have to memory delusion and start finding some things. So let's see if we're against, I'm assuming it's the Malia Life Gang deck. Yep, fill up that graveyard. So the question will be, are they slow enough for us to actually be able to do something? Okay. I mean, they haven't got their rip roaring start. I mean, these Restless Fortresses are going to be really tough for us later on. Okay. Right into your Amalia. Sadistic Pilgrim. I think we just have to keep things off the battlefield as long as possible. Go for the throw. What a good draw. I mean, this is a pretty good hand to kind of hold them back. Voice of the Blessed. Yes. Comes a 3-3. Three, three. A bat. It's gonna become a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, we'll let them we'll let them take. takes Terror Tide, we just go for the throat. I think if you're smart though, you have to take Terror Tide because I'm gonna Memory Deluge. I'm gonna hope to find one of these lands and then I just Terror Tide, I get rid of both of them. And then we're way ahead. Yeah, very smart on their part. We're just gonna go and draw right here. Uh, we didn't find it, a little surprising. Jace is interesting. Holds him back for a while. New battlefield. Um, oops. Okay. I think let's just do this. Let them focus on Jace right now and not my life total. Our plans are beyond your comprehension. We want one more untapped land and then right, then we have all the mana we really need. We get an untapped land though. 
We really want to save Go for the Throat, though, for the Restless Fortresses. Okay. Do they just go all at this? Because that's going to be two, three, four. You could drop it down to two. Okay. That's kind of the whole idea we're going with right now. So we could just play the... All right, they, they don't want to mess with it. I mean, we, we were going to win this game. There's, I mean, we were way ahead here. So if you just want to take a look, right? We could go for the throat and then we could voice the blast. We could just go for the throat that. We have the Urtai for this. Right, we have more card draw. We still are going to have the Jace. So we're going to plus over on the bat. I mean, it, we're just going to get too much value out of this thing eventually. We're going to eventually find our win cons and be able to take it over. It's a shame they were just going to ditch out on this. But I do feel like the Amalia, Voice of the Bless, Orzhov Life Gang is one of your better decks, but it's really meta dependent. When you're going up against a lot of Boros Convoke and Mono Red, which our, man, or our current meta is, it does really well. However, we've started to have that shift and now there's a lot more Azorius control, Jeskai control, and this deck does terrible against that. Apparently, not too great against this one either. So, not too bad. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up now. Welcome back, and what a unique, interesting one that was. We ended up going three and one, which is fantastic, but I said this in one of the games, at least one of the games, my number one question is, how in the world do you go through a whole tournament with this deck? Just not running out of time, right? Those are some long games. We're talking about some 15, 18 minute games. And if you're playing best of three and you're not winning both of those, you're coming out to running out of time limits on these. Plus, if you want to go 12, one and one, that last one, you probably was already 12, one, so you just took the draw. But that's 13 matchups with this where you're sitting close to an hour on every single one of those, that is one long day with this deck. So if you are that type of player, you like a long grindy matchup and maybe control's not necessarily your thing, this is definitely interesting, really cool. I'm so glad I got to play it. I think I wanna play a few more games just on my own, just really kind of learn the ins and outs of it and just figure out, because even if this is not your style of deck, I know I'm gonna see this occasionally, probably not a whole ton in best of one, but if I see it just once or twice, I wanna be able to beat it. And I want to know everything I can about this deck. The more you learn about your enemy, the better you're gonna do against it. So that's why I always like to play all sorts of different decks. Cause then when I go to my bread and butter decks, now all of a sudden when I play these other ones, I know exactly what to do. I know when to hold back, when to push forward. It just gives you so much more insight into them. So it's the number reason, number one reason to play so many different styles of decks. Now, as far as with Jitsu Belt, I'm going to give it a brown belt because I did well with it. And that brown belt with a little caveat because this is a best of three deck. So I'm going to say it's definitely a brown belt towards there and I can't help it. If you do the biggest tournament we've had this year, you go 12 one and one with it. You take that tournament down. It is a good deck. It obviously did well against the meta. Now, how the meta starts adapting and shifting over the next few weeks before our next set, that's to be determined. Okay, but this thing definitely has some power. If I was going to say for just a straight up best of one, don't even realize it won a tournament, realize I'm not gonna play any best of three. If you just wanna sit down and play your best of one, I think this thing would probably settle probably around a purple belt, but I just think because of those accolades, there's no way we could disrespect it. I'm gonna give it the brown belt for it. And just creativity, fun factor with it, such a unique deck. Probably one of the most unique decks I've seen in quite a while. Just really, really cool. And I don't even know all the ins and outs. Game one, I totally blew it. I totally forgot about the whole idea of I'm supposed to be using my Abandoned Mire to be getting back my Jace, pop the Jace, get it back again, and just finish them off. We ended up winning that game, but we would have won a lot quicker if I actually did things correctly. So definitely a deck, right, that you're gonna have to use your brain, do some thinking, get some play testing with it, and figure out all the ins and outs, but definitely a really cool one. So make sure you stay tuned until next time where we play another awesome deck in Standard. But until then, never forget, you're an ace.